Howdy, this is Tony with Lone Star Coops, and today we're going to be talking about the absorbency level of different types of chicken bedding. Lone Star Coops. In today's video, we're going to go over six common types of chicken bedding and three different tests that we did to see which one is the most absorbent and the best choice for your coop. There are a lot of different coop setups. Some are like this, where you just have a roosting area with the bedding underneath it. Other coops are set up where the entire coop floor has bedding on it. I think you'll find the results of these tests interesting no matter which type of coop setup that you have. The result of a poor choice in bedding or a improper bedding setup is going to be a smelly coop or a high ammonia smell. A couple of easy ways to fix that is to make sure that you have the right amount of bedding for the amount of chickens you have and to make sure that you have plenty of ventilation. But equally important is the type of bedding that you choose and making sure that you have one that is highly absorbent. The bedding materials we're going to be evaluating today are straw, sawdust, pine shavings, dried leaves, horse pellets, and finally industrial hemp. I know there are a fair amount of people out there that use sand as your bedding material. However, we did not evaluate sand in this test because sand is not absorbent. First, for each bedding type, we looked at the dustiness and the messiness of using the bedding material. For this test, one pound of each material was placed in nylon and shaken together so we could observe how much dust was emitted. Unfortunately, we don't have the facilities here to measure particle size and quantity, so the assessment was made based on observation. On this first test, the industrial hemp and horse pellets scored the best, the sawdust scored the worst, the leaves, pine shavings, and straw all had an average score. For our first absorption test, we leveraged a testing methodology used by the University of Iowa. We took one pound of each material in the nylon and submerged it in water for 24 hours. We ensured each sample material was fully submerged and then covered the containers and let them sit for a day. Once the 24 hours was elapsed, each sample was taken out and hung up to drip dry to allow any excess water to come off. And then we weighed each sample to see how much water the bedding material had retained. In our first absorbency test, straw, sawdust, and hemp were the leaders. Each one of them was able to retain three times their weight in water after soaking for 24 hours. The pine shavings, horse pellets, and dried leaves did not fare as well. That was a good test of the overall absorbency of each material, but in real life it's not that realistic because we just don't soak our bedding in water or droppings for 24 hours. So for our second test, we modeled off of a study done by Oxford University Department of Zoology where we took a fixed amount of each bedding material and added a fixed amount of water to it. So for our second absorbency test, we took approximately one cubic foot of each bedding material and added eight cups of water to it and allowed it to sit for 30 minutes. Then we screened the material and measured how much water did not get absorbed. 
Since we fill up our hen houses by volume, not by weight, this is a more realistic test of what a real life situation is going to be like. And like I said, we took each material and poured off the remaining water. Let's get into the results and see which one came out ahead. The amounts that are going to be showing on the screen are the remaining water that was poured off that did not get absorbed by the material within 30 minutes. The results of this absorption test showed that the leaves performed very poorly. The pine wood shavings and straw still had a considerable amount of water sitting on the bottom and the industrial hemp sawdust and horse pellets had virtually no water unabsorbed at the bottom of the container. Just one other interesting observation after we finished the testing and the materials were set aside the sawdust and the expanded horse pellets were swarmed by flies. I'm not sure why and I don't have a good explanation for that yet other than maybe the moisture that they retained. We're going to do some additional testing on that in a separate video, but I thought it was worth mentioning here. So in today's video, our primary focus was looking at the absorbency and the dustiness of the materials. Any of these materials would be a perfectly fine choice for your chicken bedding as long as you understand the pros and cons of each one. But there will be a winner today and we'll get to that in just a second. But before I do, I just want to go over the pros and cons of each material. Sawdust had the best overall absorbency. However, it has a major downside in its dustiness. The other problem with sawdust is that it can be pretty hard to obtain unless you are a carpenter or have a neighbor or someone who can give you a steady supply of sawdust whenever you need it. The other issue with sawdust is that it can take a long time to dry if that is your only bedding material and that's going to lead to some moisture and ammonia problems. As far as straw bedding goes, the pros are that it is relatively inexpensive and it's pretty easy to obtain. The downside is that it can be messy to work with. It does have a little bit of dust and like we saw in test number two, it allows a lot of liquid to pass all the way through to the bottom of your coop. And with that water sitting on the bottom of your coop, you're going to end up with some smell and mold issues. When it comes to dried leaves, their benefit is obvious. Almost everybody has access to dried leaves. We use them in our chicken run. We don't use them in the hen house. And the primary reason for that is they just don't absorb enough moisture to be used as your main source of bedding. When it comes to pine shavings, similar to straw, the pros are that it is relatively inexpensive and it's pretty easy to obtain at most retail outlets. The downside to the pine shavings is that like the straw and the dried leaves, it allowed a lot of liquid to pass all the way through. And that again is going to create a moisture problem at the bottom of your coop, creating smells and increasing your ammonia levels. The horse pellets performed well. They are essentially a pellet form of sawdust. So their absorption capability was very similar to the sawdust in our testing. The problem with the horse pellets is that they retain a lot of moisture and take a long time to dry. And that's going to cause some problems in your coop, again, with smells and ammonia buildup. When it came to the industrial hemp, we noticed that it was virtually dust free. It was pretty easy to work with, not messy like the pine shavings and sawdust can be when you're trying to move them in and out of your coop. 
And finally, it absorbed almost all the liquid in our second absorbency test with only half a cup not absorbed. The downside to the hemp most obviously would be it has a higher upfront cost. However, that is offset by the fact that for most people, one bale will typically last them an entire year. The conclusion to our testing was that the industrial hemp is the overall winner due to a combination of reasons. It is virtually dust free. It's highly absorbent, dries out very quickly, so it will not attract flies into your hen house. And finally, it has a great composting ability. Please share with us in the comments down below your thoughts and your experiences with bedding and absorption. If you need plans to build your own chicken coop, please check out our website, LoneStarCoops.com. And as always, if you found this video useful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to our channel. Thank you for watching.